Please stand as we sing together number 316 as we gather at your table. Number 316. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through your holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness, into sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us, Christ, your great compassion to forgive Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. grace and peace from God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus and the fellowship of their Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Well, welcome to the last outdoor mass <laughs> at Lords and Litchfield, except we're indoors. Um, at least my rain, my uh, rain app, my weather app says it's going to rain constantly. So far, I don't see it, but we're, we're in here to be on the safe side. Um, we're called to follow the Lord Jesus. And following the Lord Jesus means we have to leave some things behind. We have to let go. So let us open our hearts to receive God's mercy, God's grace, so that we have the ability to follow Jesus and to let go of the things we need to let go of. Lord Jesus, you became poor that we might be rich in God's grace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you emptied yourself for us that we might have eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us from sin and death to life eternal. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to peace. Of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest. Oh, no. 
Let us pray. O oh Lord, may your grace at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Before we listen to the word of God, I just want to welcome the walking mothers from Tarrington. Are you here? You're outside. They're outside. They walked in pilgrimage from Tarrington today in the rain. So welcome. It always seems that it rains on a Sunday when you come here. Anyway, let's open our hearts and listen to the word of God. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given to me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her, silver is to be accounted myrrh. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the <clears throat> eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. strength of your word. Send us to be your disciples, to bring all the world to the joy of your kingdom. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus answered him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. But you know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he replied, he said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come, follow me. And at that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. And Jesus looked around, and he said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed. So Jesus said again to them, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished. And they said among themselves, but who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and he said, for human beings, it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. And then Peter began to say to him, we have given up everything and followed you. And Jesus said, amen, I say to you. There is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
riches, possessions, money. There was an elderly man who bought a lottery ticket and um, he won a million dollars. But his children found out about it before he did and they were really worried because the guy had a really bad heart and they were afraid the shock would kill him. So they didn't know what to do. So they decided to talk to the parish priest who was a good friend of the father's. And so the priest said, don't worry, I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll, I'll test the waters, see how he's doing. So the priest goes to his old friend, and they sat down, they had a drink. And in the middle of the conversation, the priest says, hey, Frank, you know, I've often wondered, what would you do if you ever won a million dollars? And without any hesitation, Frank says, I'd give it all to the church. And with that, the priest dropped dead of a heart attack. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> the first time I read it, I laughed in my room for five minutes. I just <laughs> but in our society, in our society, we do view very few things as more important than, than money. There is that musical cabaret that has the rather cynical song, money, 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 makes the world go round, makes the world go round. Well, money is power, power to build, power to tear down. And it's probably because our own focus is so much on it that we might think that this whole gospel story is just about wealth, giving up wealth. And it's not. The story says the guy has a lot of possessions, but the story is really not about money. The story is about love and trust. Love of God and Jesus and trust in him. And you can see the love kind of flowing around this story. I mean, the enthusiasm of the rich guy as he comes, he kneels before Jesus, he's so excited. He's got an honest desire to do what needs to be done, telling Jesus all about it. Jesus sees him. He loves him too. He says that. And he, he really, you could see the, the electricity between the two of them. And the tragedy is that the man did not believe enough in Jesus' love. He couldn't believe enough in Jesus' love to really trust him. And that's the tragedy. Jesus asks him to give up all of his possessions, and that's something the man just couldn't do. But it was not so much a failure of generosity, but it was a failure of trust. He wondered whether Jesus would cheat him, whether Jesus would sell him short. He should have been able to trust that if Jesus was asking him to let go of what he had, it was only so that Jesus could give him more, something he didn't have yet. But he couldn't believe that, this young man. And because he couldn't trust Jesus, he walks away, holding on to what he possesses now, but leaving behind what he could have possessed if he trusted Jesus. And we're just like him so often. The story asks us to trust that when we must let go of good things, good things, God has not forgotten us. In fact, God is often preparing us for another good thing that might be even greater than we could ask for or imagine. Perhaps, Perhaps God is asking us to give up some material economic thing. It, the times are really tough. Anything could happen in a heartbeat with jobs. Perhaps that. But there are a variety of things that God might be asking us to let go of. Maybe a relationship. Maybe a project that we've dreamed of for so long. 
as we grow older, we have to let go of some of our energy, of our memory, our mobility. This really is hard. And all of these things are good things, but as life moves on, there are times when we can no longer hold on to them. And we have to let them go. And that's when we need to trust that God has not forgotten us. The, the spiritual writer, Richard Rohr, he kind of pulled this together in a beautiful saying. He said, sometimes the greatest obstacle to the next good thing that God wants to give us, the obstacle to the next good thing is the good thing we already possess. Sometimes the biggest obstacle to the next good thing is what we already possess. We can become so possessive of what we already have that we close ourselves off to what is yet to come and it's really bad news. Today's gospel, then, is not about possessions. It's about the freedom to trust. And more and more, as we grow older and older, to trust that God will still remember us. That, that first reading is so beautiful from the Book of Wisdom, talking about wisdom. And wisdom is, is the very nearness, the very love of God. Wisdom. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne and deemed riches as nothing in comparison to her. Beyond health and beauty, I loved her and chose to have her rather than the light. And here's the clincher, the surprise. And yet all good things together came to me in her company. With this gift of wisdom, all good things came together in her company and countless riches at her hands. There's a beautiful hymn that is about another part of a gospel of somebody who found a treasure and really did give all they had to buy it. And we're just going to listen to that hymn now and pray it as, as you listen to it. Lord, to whom can I go? You alone speak the words of love. the 
this treasure as my own. Let us stand and profess our faith together by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so let us pray for the church that we may experience God looking upon us with love and respond generously to what God asks of us today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the synod that Pope Francis has opened, that God will guide the whole church in listening to the Holy Spirit so that we may deepen our communion and be more faithful to the mission of evangelization and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, for peace in the holy lands, in Ukraine and Haiti, that God's wisdom would give light and mercy to warring hearts, and move them to work for lasting justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper awareness that we recognize the limits of power and beauty, of fame and wealth, and learn to trust God and to embrace our families and our community more fully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all those who are recovering from the hurricanes and the storms, from wildfires, that God will sustain them and speed the assistance they need, give strength to those who are helping them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, always for those who are sick. You yourself, if you're not well, those who care for the sick each day. That God will heal the sick, strengthen those facing a long recovery, and renew all those who care for the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our dearly departed. Today we pray in a special way for Italia Piero, for John Showalter, Peg Lynch, Sheila Ivan on her birthday. The Mass is offered for Thomas Rubas and Dennis Mulhern. That those who place God's love first in this life may enjoy eternal life in the age to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we do remember again the walking mothers of Tarentin who arrived here today again in pilgrimage, and then also in thanksgiving to God for all the graces and the blessings received here at Lourdes in this 66th pilgrimage season, and then in quiet for the things closest to your own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, more precious than gold or silver, more enduring than health or beauty, is the spirit of your wisdom. In her company are all good gifts. 
Send this wisdom from your holy heavens that we may hear and follow the good teacher, Jesus, who looks on us with love and gladly forsake all lesser things for the unrivaled treasure of your kingdom. We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, please, please be please. seated, everyone. And if you're, if you're not used to what we do for a collection here, there are baskets, wicker baskets, at the beginning of each section. And if you want to kind of pass them along and back, and our, our ushers will collect those. And we very much appreciate your generosity to help keep the shrine alive. <laughs> We're not asking you to give all your possessions. No, no, not today. No. <laughs> Unless you really want to. Just some. sisters and brothers that our sacrifice in our lives may be acceptable to God, the loving Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word, you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather women and men whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Oh, 
O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, almighty father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your son and confirm in us the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christopher, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, 
that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all together to everlasting life. For the reception of communion, we'll invite you to come forward section by section. 
Those of you out in the center section, there'll be two Eucharistic ministers um, coming out to you. Um, if you have a difficulty walking, you can stay where you are. After the others have come forward, just raise your hand. We'll come to you. And um, if you'd rather not receive communion and you would like a blessing, just cross your arms over your chest and we'll pray a prayer of blessing for you. Our first communion song is number 740. Oh, how blessed. Number 740. song is number 510 we remember number 510 
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So um, the cafe is not open today because we're having the harvest dinner immediately after Mass. Those of you who have reservations for that dinner, just you enter through the front door of Pilgrim Hall. Um, there'll be uh, people collecting your tickets, and if you forgot your ticket, um, you just have to swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. Um, anyway, um, so that's uh, what's coming up after Mass. In a few weeks' time, we'll have our fall, um, our fall tag sale. Um, Drop-off days are the 21st and the 22nd of October. So you can go through your house and look for all the treasures you want to let go of. Um, and then you can come back on the 24th to the 27th to buy some new treasures <laughs> to bring to your house. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Did I forget anything? Mass next week. Oh, yes. So after today, Mass will be at 1030. Not 11.30, 10.30, every day of the week except Monday. There's no Mass on Mondays, but every day of the week at 10.30. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. Our recessional song is number 199, Immaculate Mary. Number 199.